Greetings, everyone. Should we go ahead and, and get started? Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, joining us for the remote celebration of the Cambridge Art Association's 2021 National Prize Show. Uh, during tonight's event, we will share a recorded tour of part one of the exhibi uh, exhibition, followed by a slideshow of all the artworks included in both parts one and two, created by CAA's Assistant Director, Dire uh, Rebecca Schnapp. We will hear from our juror, um, Alice Gray Stiles, Director and Curator of um, 21C Museums, and we will have an award presentation with brief comments from each of the prize winners. Before the end of the event, we will have time for breakout rooms where you can socialize with the participating artists and each other. I'm looking forward to seeing all the excellent art. Uh, National Prize Show is always uh, an excellent showcase for art. Candace? Hi, everyone. I'm Candace Van Carey. I'm the program manager here at uh, CAA. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone to remain muted during the speaker portion of this event. Um, and that you can see in the three little dots in the corner there. Um, you can mute yourself. Uh, Please use the chat to let us know where you're joining from, as Rebecca mentioned uh, to begin with, and if you are an exhibiting artist or if you are here to support an exhibiting artist. You can also direct message other attendees by clicking on the blue uh, button uh, that says everyone uh, in the chat and scrolling to, a, to select a particular person. If you have any questions during the artist talk, please use the hand raise function under the reactions button to let us know if you have a question. Uh, finally, this event is being recorded and we will be posting to CAA's YouTube channel next week. Uh, as we begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land we are gathered on, both literally and virtually. Tonight, uh, we join you from the unceded lands of the Ma Massachusetts people. I join you from the traditional lands of the Pawtucket, Pawtucket tribe. Uh, as an Organization, the Cambridge Art Association acknowledges the painful history of this territory and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. Um, I am joined tonight by CAA's director, Aaron Becker, and assistant director, Rebecca Schnapp, and I will let them take it away. Thank you, Ted, who is our board president, and Candace for that introduction. I am Erin Becker, the Norma Jean Calderwood Director of the Cambridge Art Association, and I am joining you from the CAA's Catherine Schultz Gallery, where part one of the National Prize Show is installed. In a moment, our Assistant Director, Rebecca Schnapp, is going to play a, a virtual tour of the exhibit uh, with a slideshow featuring both the first and the second parts. And then after the video, we're going to hear from our juror, Alice Gray Spates, who is the director and curator of the 21C Museum. For now, here's the video.
Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what part two looks like once we put that up on the walls in June. Uh, I'm so pleased uh, that in these very strange times we're living in, um, that by doing this exhibit and this reception online, we can welcome our juror, Alice Gray State, uh, who is located in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, she is the museum director and chief curator at the 21C Museum Hotels. Uh, 21C is a multi-venue museum founded by collectors Laura Lee Brown and Steve Wilson and has locations in Louisville, Cincinnati, Bentonville, Durham, Lexington, Oklahoma City, Nashville, Kansas City, and Chicago. Uh, Stites curates exhibits, site-specific installations, and a range of cultural programming at all 21C museum hotels and oversees the curation, maintenance, and conservation of a 3,500 work collection of contemporary art, which includes painting, sculpture, photography, film, video, VR, and AR. In addition, 21C actively loans to and from the collection to domestic and international institutions. Between 2012 and 2020, 21C has commissioned 25 site-specific permanent installations by artists from the, Euro the US, Europe, and Asia. And so I'm so pleased to welcome Alice tonight. Thank you. And thank you so much for um, asking me to participate in this wonderful program. Um, I was speaking earlier um, with Rebecca um, and and Aaron and, and saying that uh, what they what Cambridge Art Association does for emerging artists and um, community engagement, it feels so familiar. And um, it's part of 21C's DNA to be engaged in supporting artists in each community um, and connect and, and making connections. Um, so I feel very at home, even though I've never uh, met any of you and um, would love to be in the space. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm I saw in the chat that uh, there's a question about whether I would speak about 21C and I'm happy to, um, to take questions if you want to learn more about that program. Um, so I will, uh, just to share with you my um, a few thoughts about this exhibition. I was so impressed with the range of materials and ideas, subject matter approaches um, to reflecting on what is happening in the world around us today. Um, it's my belief that artists not only create work that really does reflect on what current conditions are, but looks both ahead and behind, um, forward and backward, and to give, to give us a kind of roadmap to understand where we've been and kind of remember the present um, in a way to look forward to the future. Um, so here's what I have to say, um, and I don't know if my statement has been shared, so forgive me if, um, if that is so. Um, while, uh, well, I'll just say that um, while I was reviewing all the wonderful and thought-provoking submissions, I was also reading a, a book of essays called, that had been re recently published called Art in the Age of Anxiety. Um, that was published on the occasion of the Sharjah Biennial. And then there is an essay in there by the artist Douglas Copeland. Um, and as I reviewed the submissions, I kept thinking of, of this particular quote from him. I sit here and look out at the window at night. I want to see a beam of light and I want to stand inside it. I want to look up at its source and I want it to say, I promise you a mystery, I promise you peace, I promise you great visions, and I promise you a new superpower. All of the artists who submitted to many of the works submitted gave me a sense of mystery uh, and of hope, even those that explored the sense of desolation and isolation and precarity um, that has affected all of us. According to Kronos or the measurable linear perception of time, 
more than a year has passed since we were slept, swept up into this maelstrom of the pandemic, wherein we continue to reckon with uncertainty, inequality, and vulnerability. As reflected in the broad and thoughtful range of work submitted for consideration for the 2021 Cambridge National Art Prize, artists today are looking forward and back, outward and inward, and searching more for which questions to ask rather than what statements to make about the transits and transformations we're all experiencing. References to dreams abound in both subject matter and imagery, though few depict idyllic realms. A single airplane floats against a pastel sky. Images of staircases or scaffolding lead toward lighted but undefined spaces. Collages combine flora, fauna, and decay, emphasizing and embracing mystery. The works that directly invoke COVID-19 and the attendant isolation Innovation, fear, and widespread loss that continues also pose questions. How did this happen? Who is responsible? How and when will it all end? Indeed, time itself seems to be interrogated in much of the work. A number of the artists investigate personal or collective history, both documented and imagined, to explore and reveal the complexity of cultural identity. Looking to the past for a way forward into a future that remains uncertain, yet will hopefully be more inclusive, these artists envision portals through which new and old superpowers may emerge. I want to say congratulations to all of the artists whose work is shown. It's great to see so many of you here tonight. Um, and I am looking forward to spending more time learning about your work. All right, thank you, Alice. So now we're going to get to the part that everyone is always excited for, the award presentation. Um, so I don't know, if, Rebecca, if you can pin Alice and I together somehow on the screen. Oh, I'm in the spotlight. Oh, okay. Um, so, Alice, do you want to, if you want to read off the names, I can hold up their, their prize winning certificate and then uh, Rebecca can have them join us. Okay. On our Great. virtual podium. <laughs> so, our third prize winner is Chelsea Bradway for her work, Heroin. Congratulations, Chelsea. Unmute yourself, Chelsea. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> this is so exciting. Thank you so much, um, Alice. This is like, I verklempt. <laughs> um, so what's interesting about this photo is it was kind of a fluke in a sense that I was, I'm doing a woman empowerment shoot of a hundred women. And I had no specifications. I had to say, come up and give me what makes you feel happy and empowered and beautiful or not beautiful. And um, this woman came in with, with her friend and I always have wings hanging in the studio. And she's like, can I put on these wings? And she did, and she just kind of moved around and it was dark. It was like six o'clock and I just snapped. And I was like, ooh, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be amazing and magical. And it was very dark and moody, which is very opposite of my typical work. Like I'm pretty bright and happy and positive, but I really like this because I love um, Sargent and his works. And I always admired oh. they can be so dark, but there's bits of light that are like, I'm just so fast and I can't paint. <laughs> I wish I could. You all are amazing painters. And um, I just, it just kept reminding me of him. And I was like, wow, I did this. <laughs> so that's, you know, kind of how it came out and hopefully, you know, everything else will be just as beautiful, but she's the one that I kept in color. Everyone else is in black and white, but it just, I was, I don't know, I was very happy and proud of how it came out and it was, you know, pretty magical. <laughs> 
You know, it has that feeling of being a serendipitous, an unexpected moment because of the angle of her body and yeah. where you're seeing her from. She, I, I had that sense that she was almost in motion. Yeah. And while, you know, you're, your, your own statement about your work is very clear that you are, look, you are doing a project about women's empowerment and your work is about trying to expand our definitions of identity and, and who gets to have power and, you know, through the lens of, of gender. Um, I felt that it, the complexity of this image and that she was able to project both strength and vulnerability, tenderness and presence at the same time, um, I thought, well, you know, we're going to need new definitions for a lot of things. And one of them is heroism. Yeah, thank you. We need more heroism this year, for sure. <laughs> and different kinds of heroism, right? Yeah, like diff exactly. different, uh, different approaches to who gets to be celebrated. And we've already seen that. Um, in very real ways, our notion of who is essential, right? Yeah. But it is beautiful. And I love that you are inspired by uh, Sargent. I see that very much in this work. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank hey, you, Rebecca. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. All right. So I think, are we going to show Chelsea's work, Rebecca? Or are we going to wait? Let's wait until the end. We're going to show these images at the end. Um, so congratulations, Chelsea. Thank We're you. going to see your image shortly. <laughs> Good job, Mama. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so our second prize winner uh, is... Lani Asuncion. For her work, The Local. And then Lonnie, if you are here, um, I don't see your name anywhere. So feel free to unmute yourself. And it doesn't look like Lonnie is here tonight. Well, congratulations to Lonnie. Do you have any comments about Lonnie's work while we're here without them? Well, I kept coming back to this one because I love the way that something so simple, a pineapple, a pet, well, this one is a six year petrified pineapple inside a wooden box that kind of looks like a pallet or a, you know, a shipping pallet um, can say so much. You know, we are really, this is a, there are a number of themes that have come, that come up in the show um, and different artists work that she combines beautifully. The evolution of our relationship to nature, um, the journey of the immigrant, the complexity of cultural and gender identity, and the, um, and the notion of storytelling. She's using these simple elements to get us to, 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 to evoke or to reference the history of the, the pineapple in the context of exploring her own identity as a queer multicultural third generation Philippinex artist, as she says. And these are all um, conversations that are happening. And I love it when an artist can distill a whole host of ideas and references into very simple um, using, you know, simple and limited multimedia materials. So congratulations to um, Lonnie, wherever she, wherever she may be. <laughs> yes, congrats Lonnie. And um, with our next, our next award winner, um, so we're gonna show all of the images uh, afterwards and have the artist give a few comments. So um, when our first prize winner is announced, we will have you speak very briefly, but the, the longer discussion that uh, Rebecca had um, mentioned to you will happen after we present all of the awards. So with that, our first prize winner is... Roya Ami for Welcome and Entertain Them All. Uh, hi. Hi, Roya. Hello. Hi. Hi, Alice. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, 
um, Candice, Erin, and everyone. Um, well, I'm excited. Um, uh, thank you so much for picking my work. Uh, so um, welcome and entertain them all. Um, I'm going to talk about the process. So um, first, uh, I made uh, many uh, small drawings uh, by uh, gluing thread on paper. So everything, all the drawing is made by thread. There is no line, there is no ink. And the imagery comes from Persian miniature. So that was my references, uh, the visual references. So I recreated those uh, small drawings by uh, different parts of Persian miniatures. Uh, and then when I was done with the drawing, I start layering uh, papers, I put lace, I put thread in between, I start shaping um, uh, vagina structure. And then I put uh, drawings between the structure. And when I made the whole piece, I start cutting out the pieces into many fragmented, many fragments. Then I, then I stitch those fragments back together. And the concept of this work is about uh, sexuality, and it comes from the story of um, the story uh, which are shared to me um, uh, from the women I know, mostly from uh, Iranian women. Uh, I'm from Iran, actually. Uh, so the concept is about the sexuality and how um, when we want to explore our sexuality. Also, there is uh, so much pressure from uh, society towards uh, sexuality of women. And I inspired by uh, the 12th chapter of uh, Quran, Quran. It's a story of Joseph, a story of Joseph and his lover, but his lover, uh, she was married, but she fell in love with Joseph. But at the end, God forgave her and gave yeah. Joseph to to her and they had children and happy ended. So, uh, but people, they have different interpretations from that story, but that was the interpretation I, I got and I worked about it. Fantastic. I'm so happy to know the actual story, you know, the, the story that you were responding to. Um, I, I was very drawn to both the, you know, material and your craft practice, which is really remarkable. Um, as you say, there's no paint in these images um, and the fragmentation of it. Um, and that made me, that there was, a, there was something about um, speaking about the body and the most intimate part of the body that that became a way to reflect upon this fragmentation that we're all feeling. And there was, there was a, 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 there's a feeling of it being both of um, a dismembering and then a mending process as well sewing of course is mending um and i like that i was very drawn to your uh inspiration from the persian miniatures and from iranian folk tales um and your you know subversion of the original uh some of the original storylines which of course were very male centric and taking a um matriarchal perspective and taking up space by speaking through the experience, a, a very intimate experience of women's bodies and women's sexualities is very powerful and timely and timeless. Um, and I like the notion of making something into small pieces and that comes together to literally and figuratively and metaphorically take up space and uh, speak loudly through an ancient story that's been rethought through. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice. Congrats, Raya. Thank you. All right. And last but not least, our best in show prize, which is actually right over my shoulder, right here. He oh. Young Shin, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, yeah, you're yeah, very, very the... close. <laughs> okay, uh, so pronounce your name for me. Hey Young. 
Hey Young. Hey yes. Young Shin, <laughs> congratulations on winning Best in Show for Immeasurable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, I mean, um, thanks, thanks to the uh, Cambridge Art Association uh, for providing this fantastic opportunity for me to share my work. And also, yeah, Alice, uh, I cannot, um, you know, express my gratitude towards you. Um, this is, without a doubt, this is the highlight of the year for me, for sure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and surely be the proudest moment as our artist and, and as a mother. And uh, especially during this trying time, I haven't seen her, my daughter for many, many months. <laughs> so yeah, um, so thank you so much again for this, for this honor. So um, for, for this particular work, Immeasurable, I use uh, cutout block printing images for the flowers and human figures. And it was a part of my long-term uh, you know, paper casting project, Lingers, in which I was inspired by my childhood memory of my late mother and me uh, framing dry flowers to keep our memories safe and alive. And the paper, yeah, the paper casting technique that I use is a, one of the Korea's uh, traditional paper casting, uh, 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 paper crafting methods uh, which called the Jiho Kipap, uh, mm -hmm. which is used to cast from the existing uh, object forms. Uh, so it is similar to paper mache process in the Western paper craft culture um, and tradition. So I also always kind of like uh, fascinated by how thin layers of paper allow me to, you know, replicate the folds and uh, contours of a textured surface. And um, I always captivated by how paper molds and then keeps the shapes as if it is a trying uh, to save the memory of where they were placed. So um, as a multiple, uh, you know, uh, uh, media artist, uh, paper has been my long-term fascination as I've been trained as, and practiced as a printmaker, draftman, an artist bookmaker and paper sculptor. And I also grew up in a Korean culture where the paper is not only just a material for drawing or the uh, writing, but also to use for creating home goods, furniture, and even to use as an architectural material. So from that upbringing, I see the paper as an embodiment of culture, uh, as a various paper exists in different civilizations that can hold and interconnect experiences and memories like a human skin. So um, yeah, I've been always fascinated by how, uh, I mean, the, by the paper's transformative uh, nature uh, when I use my two-dimensional uh, artwork, like a drawings or prints, to produce a three-dimensional project like uh, installations or sculptures, uh, sculptures. So I love how this flat and somewhat fragile, you know, material uh, translate into stronger structure. And the process rem reminds me um, how we, as a human, grow into multiple-dimensional beings. So yeah, so I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, that, is, that thank you so much for sharing so much about both your process and the source of your inspiration in terms of the you know craft that you're bringing into this. Um, so the you know the dichotomies inherent in our in the materials that artists use is right. always at, at exploring that. So that's an example of um, some of the you know I see innovation as being something that's coming out of this time, this turbulent time, this, this time of precarity and uncertainty. So this work resonated with me because of the unexpected use of materials, because of the excellent craft process. Um, I had to keep looking at it and thinking, how did she do that? Um, and the scale of it is actually surprising. Um, it's, it's, it's large. We expect work like this to be, to be much smaller. I was really drawn to the, it, the, the format that it evokes of a mirror. And the figure is both solid, like introspective, 
and reflective at the same time. And I thought this is, this is really a wonderful um, insight into things that we're universally experiencing right now, a longing for intimacy. Uh, I didn't realize that it had so much to do with your own, with memories, but that really does resonate. Um, sitting at, you know, at, at isolated at home, separate from one another, um, we replay our memories in our minds and look to, and try to look to the future. Also, um, the, the setting of the, uh, of the figure is um, in nature. There is a strong um, return to nature, reimagine nature uh, theme that threads throughout a lot of the work in the exhibition. And um, I just wanna say I was, you know, really taken by the variety of approaches and how articulate uh, and thoughtful um, those were from all of the artists who brought nature into their work. Um, and it's also kind of a dreamscape, right? It's, it's right. also, it's, yeah. it's very fantastical. And, and I think those journeys in our minds and in our, our dreams is, has been very, has been a rich source for artistic storytelling. Um, this, and, and again, it was clear that there was an exploration of your own identity, your cultural identity, your personal identity, and your identity as a woman and as a mother um, that is really embedded and well articulated. And while there is a somberness to the what's being depicted, there's also, and forgive me if anyone is offended by this word, beauty. Be looking back at the past, remembering what was painful, trying to live through this moment of such turbulence and looking to the future, um, it's all suffused or honored. Actually, I wrote that down that there was a sense of honoring beauty um, and you were honoring your own life and your relationships and memories. But again, I think that the mirror format is partic was particularly strong because through art, we can all see ourselves right. and connect, you know, both with, within and with others. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I just want to ask you one more question. Are you living in Kansas City? Yeah, I'm living in Kansas City. I also then we have to meet the next time I come. Yeah, I know. Because I, uh, do you know Jory? Yes, she works yeah, for yeah. me. <laughs> right, 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 right. We, oh, we that's met, great. Yeah, we met a lot. I, I was a, I was a, a artist resident at the uh, Studio Sync, and then she yes, she yeah, we've been visited. Right, 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 right. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. I'll see you next time I'm in Kansas City. Absolutely. Please do. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Um, we're going to show the images. And thank you, Alice, for all those amazing comments. Um, we're going to show all of the images from the prize winners. And if folks have questions for the artists or for Alice, we ask you to put them into the chat. Um, and we will moderate that and read those questions out. Um, but this is Chelsea Bradway's work. Lonnie's and there is, I can verify because it is sitting right there, a very small, very perfectly petrified pineapple um, in that wooden plate. So if anyone has questions for the artist or for Alice, uh, please just type them into the chat or you can type into the chat that you have a question. Um, let us know. And I guess Alice, if you, because um, there was that question earlier about 21C and kind of what 21C does. If you want to um, 
say a, a little bit about the museum hotel concept since it uh, definitely is not your typical hotel. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. So 21C was founded in 2006, um, as Aaron said, by two collectors, Laura Lee Brown and Steve Wilson, who are passionate about contemporary art and about preserving the land by investing in the urban core um, and renovating historic buildings. So it was only meant to be a hometown project for Louisville, um, the downtown of Louisville, like many, you know, mid-sized American cities had been kind of abandoned in the 80s and 90s, and there were all these beautiful buildings sitting vacant. Um, and so they, and they had been very involved in collecting and in, in, you know, people coming to see their collection at their home. And they thought, well, what can, can we find some way to um, share this with the public without building an, a, a, a private museum that people have to pay to come to, or they didn't want to charge admission. So the short story is that there were, they've hired a research firm to find out what kind of business would do well in Louisville. And uh, the answer came back, your city needs more hotel rooms. So that's how 21C Museum Hotel was born. The name um, references 21st century. All of the art that we show is from 2000 um, to the, the present and into the future. And um, we also you know, borrow and loan actively. Um, we, it, it, so in, uh, in number two opened in Cincinnati in late 2012. And in 2020, we opened number nine in Chicago. All of those happened because developers and investors from these other cities came forward after seeing the unexpected success of Louisville, um, 21C Louisville. It's really revitalized downtown, other businesses and, um, and, and the art scene has really grown. Um, and we're very engaged in collaborating with other um, organizations, both you know, civic and cultural. Um, 21C is really committed to the belief that art can start and change conversations and drive civic engagement and nurture community. Uh, we are both, you know, so we're, we have a dual emphasis on the local and the global. Um, and we commission a lot of um, site-specific works while we're in the design phase of renovating these buildings. We look for kind of unexpected spaces like elevator lobbies. Erin, you might remember playing with the yep. Camille Otterback texturing <laughs> projection. Um, so yeah, that's just some of what we do. We do a lot of programming. And I should say that um, pre-pandemic, we were open 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, um, free to the public. Um, and at the moment we have time ticketing, but it's still free to the public. If you're a guest, you can roam around at any time of the day or night. Um, and, but at the moment you can make a reservation to come in. We do a lot of tours, um, film screenings, poetry readings, all sorts of programming. And um, we're doing things online now. So uh, you can sign up to join our newsletter. Um, next week, I think there's something online happening uh, in both Kansas City and Louisville. Um, there's a, a, a collaboration in Kansas City we have with Studios Inc, which um, our prize winner mentioned. And Erin Zizek from the Kemper will be speaking about her practice as well as doing uh, speaking look with in conjunction with Studios Inc. And in Louisville, um, we have a collaboration with uh, a writing a, a MFA program from Spalding University where writers come in and respond to the work of our in our in a current exhibition, um, which I'll be speaking about. And that is a new group show um, called What Lies Beneath featuring works by Hank Willis Thomas, Stephanie C. Huko, um, Cosmo White, Moha Modisa Kang, uh, and and others. Um, and so our exhibitions, which are both solo exhibitions and group shows, explore uh, the the global nature of art today um, from a, the, a humanist and honest perspective, examining how we live and die, work, play, and dream, and how we imagine the future. Um, so that's 
the, the short, the, the short were, spiel. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to ask you what, what, um, you know, what was coming up at any of the spaces. So you answered my question. Um, you know, I've, I have visited 21C in Louisville many times um, and have seen some amazing artwork there, have discovered new to me artists in that space. And so if you, if folks here find yourselves in any of the nine cities that have 21C location, nine, right? Or is it 12? So yeah. Nine. Um, definitely go check it out. The restaurant's always great. Um, the art is amazing. And um, it's a wonderful hotel concept, unlike anything else I have personally experienced. So um, thank you, Alice, for being here tonight. I don't, I don't see any questions. I see a lot of positive comments in the chat. I don't see any questions. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for being here. Um, I wanna congratulate all of our award winners. Um, we have about 10 minutes left on our time here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up breakout rooms and assign people randomly. And you can go in there and, and chat with folks like you were here in person. Um, and so thanks so much. This was recorded. So if you missed any part of it, um, it will be up on our YouTube channel probably early next week. Um, but until then, thank you so much, Alice, uh, for connecting. As I have told you, I'm a big fan of 21C. So um, I look forward to hopefully meeting you in person whenever I start to travel again. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you so much. It's really was an honor. Um, and I enjoyed it. And I look forward to, you know, following uh, all of the artists. Um, because I, I believe I have access to links to their websites. Um, and congratulations to everybody. So thank you. All right, so we're going to open up breakout rooms, folks. And if you want to stick around, Stick around and hang out for 10 minutes in the breakout room. Awesome.